right. Back on the record, we're in the presence of the jury, the defendant, and the attorneys of record are present. State of Iowa may call its next witness. Our next witness is uh, Logan Collins. And Mr. Collins, could you come over here and I'll swear you in, okay? Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay. Mr. Collins, you can make your way over there and be seated if you would, please. Let's put your step in. Man. Ready? Yes. All right. Mr. Collins, good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, can you please state your name? Logan Collins. And um, where do you live, Mr. Collins? Uh, current. Currently, yes. Currently. Uh, I live at 214 Second Street, Harwick, Iowa, 52232. Okay. How long have you lived in Hartwick? I just moved in there two months ago. All right, are you employed? Yes. Where do you work? I work at Ashley Clean for furniture cleaning out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Okay. Do you also have training as a mechanic? Yes. Um, what, what type of training is that? Uh, diesel technician. Okay. How old are you? I am 27. Are you married? I am not. All right. Do you have any children? No children. All right. Uh, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Harwick as a kid. Um, from fourth grade, we moved to Tipton in Cedar County, and that's where I graduated. All right. Did you eventually end up with a, a house in uh, Brooklyn? Yes, um, just right after 2012. Okay. Uh, tell us about that. When did you move in uh, to Brooklyn and with who? Um, I moved into Brooklyn in 2012, the summer. Um, at the current time, my uncle, uh, Robert Collins, lived there. Um, What's the address of that house? 616 East Des Moines Street, Brooklyn, Iowa. All right, and did you live there continuously from 2012 until you moved back to Hartwick? Correct. All right, so when would you have moved out of 616 East Des Moines? Um, I moved out 2000. 2019. Okay. Now, I want to direct your attention, uh, Mr. Collins, back to uh, July of 2018. Were you residing at 616 East Des Moines Street in Brooklyn, Iowa? Yes. All right. Were you living there with anyone else at that particular time? Uh, at the time, I was living with my girlfriend that was at the time. All right. Anybody else? Uh, yes. It would be my younger sibling. Elizabeth. All right. And were you working anywhere uh, at in uh, July of 2018? Yes. Where was that? I worked for Ovation Network. They're located out of Cedar Rapids. And what is Ovation Network? Uh, Ovation Network installs uh, Wi-Fi for hotel, commercial, residential, and security cameras. Okay. So you were familiar with security cameras based upon your employment, is that right? Correct. All right. Did you have a security, uh, a set of security cameras or a surveillance system at your home at 616 East Des Moines in Brooklyn? Yes, I did. Uh, when did you install that particular system? Um, I don't remember the exact month. Um, I believe I purchased it in May. Did you install it yourself? Yes, I did. And did you install it prior to July of 2018? Yes. Um, as far as you know, was it operational that entire time? Yes. Uh, were there times where you would uh, view your surveillance camera? Uh, about once a week. Okay. And just tell the jury, generally speaking, where the uh, cameras were located on your home. Uh, I had four cameras that were located on a detached garage off of the house. And generally speaking, did you have one that pointed to the southeast? Yes. And would that be towards the boundary uh, street in, or towards Boundary Street in Brooklyn? Yes. All right. And where were the other three cameras? Uh, the, one was pointing directly north. I had another one pointing northeast. I had another one pointing east, and then another one was. Sorry. That's okay. Let me just. I'll I'll help you. So the you had a, a camera pointed to the southeast, correct? Yes. Did you have one pointed to the northeast, you told us? Yes. 
Then one pointed directly north? Yes. Okay, and was there also one pointed directly south? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did the uh, southeast cameras and the south cameras uh, both uh, view East Des Moines Street? Yes. All right. Um, the camera that pointed to the northeast, uh, generally what streets would it have captured? It would have captured east and middle. A middle is an east-west street in Brooklyn? Yes. And east is a north-south street directly adjacent to your property? Yes. Um, is east paved? Do you remember? It appears gravel on the video. It is gravel. It's, it's paced about 20 feet and then it goes into gravel. Okay. Okay. And in August of 2018, were you contacted by law enforcement um, concerning access to your cameras and recordings that you've just described? Yes. All right. And do you recall what date that was? I do not remember the date. All right. But mid-August, would that sound correct? Yes. All right. Did, uh, by the way, not only did you have surveillance cameras that were mounted on the house, did you also have the system located somewhere in your residence? Yes, the DVR was mounted in the garage. Okay. So, uh, how did law enforcement get a hold of you, Mr. Collins? Um, I actually contacted a deputy sheriff um, uh, shortly after Molly went missing and he came and uh, took some surveillance. Okay. So the, did you also meet with a DCI agent on another occasion? Yes, I did. Okay. Did Between the two of those law enforcement officers, did they collect all of the information from your surveillance system? Yes, they did. Uh, would that have included anything your cameras would have captured um, really between mid-August and several months prior? Yes. Uh, do you remember, did law enforcement come over two different times? Yes, they did. Okay. So uh, whenever they came over, were you cooperative? Yes, I was. Uh, did you show them the location where your equipment was located? Yes. And did you willingly allow them to uh, download the footage? Yes. Uh, do you know how they got it, the footage off of your uh, DVR? Uh, yes, a uh, thumb drive. At uh, one point, did law enforcement actually seize the entire system? Yes, they did. Okay. And was that uh, with your cooperation? Yes. All right. Mr. Um, Collins, do you, let me um, show you a couple pictures before we move on, actually. Okay, I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as exhibit number four. You've seen this before, correct? Yes. Oops. This is a satellite or map of uh, Brooklyn. Would you agree with me? Yes. All right. I've got a cursor here, and I've got a label that says Collins Residence. Does that appear to be your residence? Yes, it is. Um, I know it's rather small here on the uh, map, but the there appear to be three buildings associated with your residence. Is that right? Yes. Tell us what those are. What's the furthest one to the north? Uh, that would be the garage. Okay, and then the middle uh, building is what? Uh, that is the house. Okay. And then the surveillance cameras that you mentioned are on the uh, northernmost building, is that correct? Correct. All right. And generally, would you have had a camera, I'm going to show you with the cursor, that would have pointed uh, in this general direction to the southeast towards boundary? Yes. All right. And then the northeast camera would be generally to this direction where the cursor is at? Correct. All right, this street here that I've got the cursor on, what street is that? That is Middle Street. All right, and then the street here that's uh, partially gravel, what is that street? East. Okay. I'm going to show you. Um,
what's been previously admitted as States Exhibit 5. Um, is this area, where is this area in relation to Brooklyn, what direction? Uh, that is northeast of my residence. Okay. And generally speaking, this would be north, or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, north or east? Yes. Okay. Is this your residence here that we were just uh, talking about here on the left side? Correct. Yes. Are you really familiar with any of this area out here, Mr. Collins, on 385th? I am not. Not somewhere you frequented? No. So, Mr. Collins, I want to show you some uh, photos that have already been admitted. Without regard to the content of this photo, Exhibit 15, which has uh, already been admitted, is this the, the, the uh, which, let me back up, which direction does this uh, camera face? That is facing southeast. Okay, does this capture the area where Boundary Street uh, would be? Yes. Okay, there's a bush that's here in the way, correct, that obstructs the view? Yes. And is this area where I have the cursor generally where Boundary Street would be located? Yes, it is. Um, exhibit 17, uh, which uh, that's previously been admitted, that's on the screen. Generally, which direction would this uh, photo be facing? That'd be facing northeast. Is who is this person? That is me. Okay. And these outbuildings that are here, do those belong to you? No. Okay. This road here, where the cursor is, is that what street is that? That is east. And this area out here, where the cursor at, is that, that is what? That is Middle Street. <clears throat> and lastly, here's Exhibit 21 that is on the screen. Um, is this the, uh, which camera is this that we're looking at? What view? That one is facing south. Okay. And this street that is here, that where the cursor is, uh, what's the name of that street? East Des Moines Street. And just to be clear, we're going to go back to Exhibit 15. Uh, the, this is the southeastern facing camera, is that right? Yes. Uh, and this street where the cursor is at, uh, which street is that? East Des Moines Street. Okay. So essentially, if you're facing south, you just turn a little to the left, and this is the view, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Collins, uh, did you know Molly Tibbetts? I did not. Did, never met her? Just met her when she dropped past. Okay. Just saw her? Yes. Okay. And um, did you know, or um, did, did you learn of her disappearance in the local media? Um, I did learn. Um, that, I'm not asking what you heard. I'm just yes. asking, did you learn about it? Yes. All right. And then, then is that why you were cooperative with law enforcement? Yes. Anything you could do to help? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Defense may cross-examine. Mr. Collins, good morning. Good morning. Now, when the or when these uh, videos were provided to law enforcement in August, had you reviewed them prior to that date? I did not. Some of these videos, I see that you were outside in the videos around the same time uh, that the pictures were shown to you, okay? Yes. 
Uh, did you notice anything unusual that night? I did not. Okay. How long did you live in a small town like Brooklyn? Um, just from 2012 to uh, when I recently moved. Okay. Is this better? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you grew up in Hartwick. That's even uh, from Tipton. Uh, yeah, that's pretty common. So if someone's driving around three or four times around the block, that's something people in small towns take notice of, right? Yes. You didn't take notice of anything unusual that day? No, it's in a small town, usually people drive up and down the streets all the time. Okay. You didn't notice a black Malibu? Uh, at the time, I did not notice it. Okay. So, on uh, July 18th, nothing unusual jogged your memory or at least caught your eye, right? Nothing. Now, when law enforcement uh, came and wanted to review your, uh, your surveillance camera video, tell me, how long does your surveillance camera video record? Up to 30 days. So you have 30 days of footage on that recorder, right? Yes. Did you give them all 30 days of footage? Yes. So they had a chance to look and see if this black Malibu is on that footage for a full 30 days, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, did anyone from law enforcement ask you to go back through and, and identify anything unusual on that footage? Uh, not the time, no. Okay. At any point? No. That's all I have. State, have anything else to this witness? Anything else? Uh, just, I guess, one other thing. The whenever we look back at. Actually, Judge, no. I don't have any for anything further. Thank you very much. Mr. Collins, thank you for being here. You're excused. Thank you. Our next witness is Derek Reeson from and DCI. The state may call him. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about the kid will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Okay. Go ahead and be seated over here if you would, please. Agent Reeson, can you please uh, state your name for the record? My name is Derek Reeson. How do you spell your last name? R-I-E-S-S-E-N. And how are you employed? I'm employed with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation through the state of Iowa. And how long have you been a DCI agent? Uh, since 1995. And um, what's your educational background? Um, I have a bachelor's degree from Mount Mercy College in Cedar Rapids. Um, no advanced degrees, bachelor's. And other than uh, DCI, do you have other law enforcement experience? No, I've been with the Department of Public Safety, the state of Iowa, my entire career. Uh, what's been the history of your assignments then with the Department of Public Safety? Um, in 1995 to 1998, I served in our gaming division, so gaming enforcement officer. In 1998, I was promoted to an agent within the gaming division. I served there until 2007, where I joined our division of intelligence. And in 2010, 
I joined the major crime unit within the Division of Criminal Investigation. Okay, describe that for us if you would, Agent Reason, whenever you say that you're involved in the major crime unit, how is that divided among the state? It, within the state of Iowa, we have four zones of offices through the major crime unit. Uh, northeast, southeast, central Iowa, and then western Iowa is a rough breakdown. Um, in this area, uh, we're considered zone four is the office I'm out of. And where is that uh, located generally within southeast Iowa? Um, our zone is comprised from Jackson County to the north to the Missouri border and to the west over Powashik, Tama County area. And there are field offices within that zone? There are. Mount Pleasant, Stockton, and Cedar Rapids. And which uh, field office are you associated with? Stockton. What are the duties of the major crime unit? We are an assist-based agency, so when jurisdictions need our assistance with crimes um, or situations that they're not used to or haven't looked at in a long time, we will come in and assist them in any way they need. <coughs> uh, typically, does the do agents assigned to the major crime unit work uh, death cases? Yes, including homicides. Correct. And prior to this particular case, have you worked other death cases? Yes. Do you know how many you've worked in the course of your career? Uh, more than a hundred, um, possibly a few hundred. All right, Agent Reason, I want to direct your attention back to July of 2018. Were you assigned to work the investigation into the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts? I was. And were you the case agent? No, I was not. Okay, tell the jury what a case agent is. A case agent is someone who kind of, if you want to think of it as a case manager, who helps take in information, assign leads, um, someone to be kind of the repository for all the information that comes in uh, in an effort <laughs> so things um, stay streamlined and the things that need to be addressed are addressed. Okay. Have you served as a case agent in other death investigations? I have. Who was the case agent assigned to the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts? Agent Trent Villeta. And does he work in the Stockton office with you? He does not. He's out of our Cedar Rapids office. All right. uh, specifically, what date did you become involved in this case? July 26th. And what was your role in the investigation on July 26th and after? Initially, it was to come in and um, conduct interviews, neighborhood canvas, friends um, of Molly Tibbetts. Um, anything that came up that was assigned is what I would do. Who made those assignments to you? Uh, Agent Valletta. Yeah. Valletta, I'm sorry. Uh, generally speaking, whenever you were uh, in Powashik County working on uh, the Molly Tibbetts case, uh, where were you uh, housed? Um, for the initial part, we were in Brooklyn at their fire station is where we worked out of. And then later on in the investigation, we transferred down to the Powashik County Sheriff's Office, which is in Mount Montezuma. Okay. And during the course of your involvement in the investigation, did you have assistance from other law enforcement agencies? Yes, we did. Uh, both federal and state? Federal, state, local, county, yes. Uh, who, what assistance would you have had from the federal government? Federal government, I recall them having um, evidence response teams um, to look at different areas, um, other agents to help with um, leads and run things out as well. So they provided anything that was needed. All right, and then other local agencies would have assisted? Correct, the Powashi County Sheriff's Office was um, very involved in the case. Were there other than state agencies that were involved that provided law enforcement assistance? Yes, there was. Okay. As part of your assignment in this case, um, were you tasked with locating uh, surveillance cameras uh, within the city of Brooklyn? Yes, I was. Uh, what was the purpose of uh, that task? The purpose of the task was to find any surveillance or any camera viewer angle 
so that we could better establish a timeline uh, for Molly and her disappearance. Okay. And in, did that take some time to go through everyone in Brooklyn? Absolutely. All right, even though it's a small town, right? Yes. Still a lot of houses and a lot of outbuildings to check for surveillance cameras, would you agree? I would agree. All right, uh, were people generally cooperative? Very. All right, and did you and other investigators create a map with tags of the locations that you would have uh, checked as well as locations that you would have needed to check? There was within um, our meeting room or war room is what we call it. There was a large Google map style. It was just a large, bigger than a poster size that was up on the wall, um, which encompassed the city of Brooklyn. And within that, there would be uh, stickers on each residence as to if they've been spoken to, checked for cameras, if there needs to be follow up or it's been completed. I'm going to show you one of those maps, uh, which is State's Exhibit Number Nine. Do you see that? I do. Is that one of the maps that you're referring to? Yes. All right. And the, there are both. There's red uh, flags that are on here, as well as uh, yellow flags. Correct. Correct. Uh, red flags indicate a place has been checked. Correct. Uh, yellow flags would indicate you still need it to check that? Need follow-up. All right, if you can look closely at that. Yes. Um, prior to going out to Logan Collins' residence at 616 East Des Moines, uh, there's a yellow flag that is near his house. Is that right? That is correct. So this map would have been utilized by law enforcement? Correct. And what would that indicate to you uh, looking at it in its present condition? That, that would need follow-up. All right. And is that one of the things that you did follow up on? Correct. Did you, um, did you go, I'm sorry, I'll let you switch. Did you and other officers, you indicated that you did follow up with the Logan Collins residence at 616 East Des Moines, West, or East Des Moines Street in Brooklyn? Yes, I did. Okay. So how many different occasions, if you know, did law enforcement go to the Logan Collins residence? I'm not sure of an exact number. I know I personally was there um, at, least, at least twice. Um, I know they, law enforcement had been there previously. Okay. Was there another officer that assisted in collecting the uh, surveillance cameras? Um, well, on my two occasions when I went there, uh, my initial um, travels to the Collins house, I was with Special Agent Matt George of the DCI. Um, we went to that residence. Um, Logan was not home at that time, so we got a number and left a message. When we went back to retrieve the actual DVR system, FBI agent Dave Warren was with me. So let's back up just a bit. Sure. Um, how did you reach out to Logan Collins at 616 East Des Moines Street? Once we went there and uh, Agent George and I uh, viewed the area and saw the cameras on the exterior of the home, we wanted to make sure that we had those cameras mm -hmm. since he wasn't at home, so we had the video. So I had called back um, to find out who the resident was of that, of that residence and um, get a phone number to try and make contact. So called and left a message for Mr. Collins, which he, he returned. Okay. Did you make arrangements to go to the Collins residence at 616 East Des Moines? I did. All right. Do you remember the date that you went there? That was August 14th. All right. What time of day would you have gone to his residence? I believe he was getting off of work, so it would have been after uh, 4.15 approximately, 4.30, somewhere in there in the afternoon. Where did you meet with uh, Mr. Collins? 
I met with uh, Mr. Collins outside of his garage and then he took me inside of his detached garage which is where he housed um, the hardware, the DVR th uh, of that nature for the system. Right. Did he also show you the locations of the cameras? He did, but they were very visible. They weren't covert. They were the kind that are hardwired onto the outside of the home okay. or the garage. Uh, would you characterize uh, Mr. Collins as cooperative? Very. How long did you spend at his house uh, on the evening of August 14th? Um, he assisted, in, well, he downloaded uh, the cameras, so I watched him do that. Um, so at the conclusion of that, I would guess half hour, 45 minutes. Okay, prior to him downloading the uh, surveillance video for you, uh, did you look at it on his system? Did you view it? No, we just knew that we needed the video based on the locations of the cameras. Um, so we provided uh, a hard drive for him to download them onto. Was he able to do that? He was. Any, any uh, uh, problems or issues in downloading the surveillance uh, footage? No. Right. Did you take it back to uh, the fire department and view it? Yes. Did you do that right away? Yes. All right. On the evening of August 14th? Correct. Before we get to the content of the video, Agent Reese, I want to ask you, just backing up a bit, um, is there, how long had you known, if, if you know, that the cameras and the footage on Logan Collins' residence <clears throat> needed to be checked? Uh, that day, Agent George and I went out was the first time I had learned that there were cameras there that needed follow-up. Okay. There was a yellow sticker on the map that we saw earlier. Correct. Is that why you went to that residence? That's exactly right. Okay. So after collecting the video, then uh, describe for the jury what your process was in reviewing it. When we returned back to um, the Brooklyn Fire Department, uh, we divided the camera since there was four angles. Um, we had different people looking at different angles in hopes to uh, see Molly Tibbetts jogging once again to help uh, solidify our timeline. Okay. And did you know in general uh, what time frame you were uh, looking for a jogger or any other evidence for that matter? Uh, based on the case information at that point, um, we had people in town who had seen her jogging, but the person who saw her last, according to our timeline, was Christina Stewart um, at approximately 7.45 p.m. So based on her accounts from where she would have seen Molly at, we backed that up to account for the time it would take to jog there. So um, I would say from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. is the time frame we were looking at. At the time, Agent uh, Reeson, did you know that there was a black Chevy Malibu associated at all with Molly Tibbetts? No. Did you review the footage? Yes. Um, was there another agent that was assisting you directly? Uh, numerous. I mean, like I said, we split them into, we had four different um, agents or off deputies uh, looking at things. Okay, um, Agent George is who I was referring to. Yes. So yeah, was he was he helping? Yes. All right. I want you, if you could, um, at one point, uh, tell us or describe. Did uh, another agent or Agent George notice what appeared to be a jogger? He did. Um, on we, we didn't notice anything while reviewing him on August 14th. On August 15th, I was reviewing the cameras. Um, specifically one area that was kind of hard to see um, but after looking and being around the, the town of Brooklyn to get to 385th there was really only two areas where you could access that road by pavement um, so the areas we 
the common areas that would have went right past mm -hmm. Mr. Logan's house, East Des Moines Street, we didn't find her there. So on the 15th, um, I spent considerable time looking at the area of boundary and the end of East Des Moines, which is hard to see on the cameras. Um, while I'm reviewing it, Agent George, he came up and he had asked me what I was looking at. Um, as I'm reviewing the cameras, I show him what I'm looking for. I turned actually to say something to him and he said, I think I saw something there. I thought he was kidding at first, but I uh, went back on the cameras and then sure enough, we saw what looked to be like a jogger going through that, that frame. It's, it's from a distance, is that right? It is. All right, now let's back up just a bit. So you started reviewing the surveillance video on August the 14th, correct? correct. Um, you quit for the evening? Yes. And then came back to it the next day on August the 15th? Correct. Uh, was that also back at the firehouse in Brooklyn? Yes. All right, and uh, that's where this uh, happened with Agent George that you just described to us, is that right? That is correct. All right, and we'll look at that video here in just a moment, uh, but did you go back then and look several times to see if you could notice anything at all that appeared to be a, a runner? Yes, yes. I looked okay. at it numerous times. Um, I, I can say it was a runner, um, has the appearance of a ponytail, but that, that was about it to me. Okay. We're gonna look at that video Um, Agent Reeson, I've got on the screen what is Exhibit 11. You can see that? Yes. Um, the date and time stamp on this particular uh, video is what? Uh, July 18th, 2018 at 1945 hours and 24 seconds, so 7.45 p.m as according to the, the time stamp on the tape or did, video. Did you take any steps to determine if the date and time stamp were accurate? Yes, when I was at Mr. Collins' residence, I compared the time and date to my cell phone. Um, the date was correct, but um, the system was three minutes slow comparing it to my cell phone. Okay, comparing it to your cell phone, correct? Correct, yes. So this three minutes, it would, have, would that be then 7.45? 748? Yes, what? my cell phone would say 748 okay. according to this. So that's just in comparison to your phone, correct? Correct. All right. Now, this is difficult to see. Would you agree with me? I would very much agree. Okay. And if you look at my cursor, the uh, what you and Agent George would have initially seen, would this have been the view you would have had? Yes, that's Boundary Street down there at the end of East Des Moines. So the gray house you can see to the south, and then the white house is actually across the street of Boundary, so to the east of Boundary. So right along that white house is where you'll see uh, a jogger. And it goes by in a fraction of a second, is that right? It does. Okay. We're going to play this, and then uh, we have an enhanced version of that too, is that right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to play uh, the video at this time. Was that it? That was it. Okay. Let's play it again one more time. <clears throat> Thank you. 
that's <clears throat> what Agent George identified to you, is that correct? That's correct. He said he saw something and then that's when we, I brought the video back and then played it forward again. All right. Let's look at state's exhibit number 12. This is a photo, correct? Yes. The, um, So we have labeled on this photo exhibit 12, runner on boundary, would you agree? Yes. And there's a black arrow pointing back to the, the uh, back towards boundary street where my cursor is at, is that correct? That is correct. Is that where the, uh, what appears to be a runner goes through? Yes. Um, obviously looking at this, we can not identify this person positively off of this video, correct? That's correct. All right. And this street that here on, on the cursor is that, what street is that? East Des Moines. And then this street that runs this direction of the cursor towards the left side of the photo is what? East Street. Okay. Now, we enhanced this portion of the video. Uh, have you seen that? I have. All right. I'm gonna now play what's exhibit 13, which is the enhanced uh, video, okay? Okay. okay. We can see it a little bit clearer there, is that correct? Yes. I'll play it again here in just a moment, but let's be clear. The, what appears to be someone running is in the area where my laser pointer is near this gray house. Is that right? Yes. All right. Uh, does the runner appear from the side of this gray house and then disappear behind the bush that is here to the left? Yes. All right. We're going to look at it one more time. Agent Reeson, um, based upon yours and other law enforcement's view of what you believe to be a runner, caused you then to do what with re the remainder of this video, or this surveillance video that you had seized? Essentially what we decided to do was to start logging every, everything we saw on the video, um, vehicles, um, any pedestrians, anything in and around that area prior to 745 and also following 745 p.m. as shown on the uh, time and date stamp. Now, um, in doing that type of surveillance, uh, generally uh, describe for us other, did you see multiple other vehicles? Yes. Well, generally describe for us what it was that you observed in that uh, effort in reviewing uh, the video that you just described. Um, while reviewing it, um, what we did, like I said earlier, once again we took this and after we had located the runner, we once again parceled it out to different agents and deputies to review and each created um, like a written log of just notes on what they had seen. So what was seen was once again cars, um, a person walking their dog, I, I recall, um, but most of it was uh, vehicles. All right. And in looking at that vehicle, collectively putting your heads together, um, did you notice a what appeared to be a black Chevy Malibu? We did. Why was it that this particular car, out of all the others that you would have seen, drew yours and other law enforcement agents' attention? The, the big thing for me was when those four individuals who were viewing tape um, gave me their logs, I created a spreadsheet um, just on Excel. And with time and date according to the timestamp, 
Um, and after the runner went past at 745.33, the next four entries in that log, once I compiled it, were a black Chevy Malibu. Is that what drew your attention? Yes. All right. And uh, was it significant to you and other law enforcement officers that it was close in time to when you saw the jogger? It was. And tell us why. It was significant just being in the area. So it was just someone we really felt we needed to identify whoever the driver was of that vehicle to see if they saw something, if they uh, knew who Molly was or passed them or whatever. We just wanted to know who was driving that vehicle. Now, are there, were there uh, distinctive features of the black Chevy Malibu that drew your attention? Yeah, some of the features on it that were distinctive as opposed to a standard Malibu, um, it had chrome side mirrors, um, so the outside of the mirror was chrome. The door handles to the vehicle were chrome, and then it appeared to have chrome mag rims on the vehicle as well. And did you take any steps or efforts or did others to, to figure out if any of those features were uh, standard on a black Chevy Malibu? We did. And what did you determine? Uh, we determined that they were kind of a specialty item or could have been an aftermarket item as well. What was the aftermarket item? Would have been the mirrors. Okay. The chrome handles? Um, I don't recall if those were aftermarket or could have been through the factory. I, I don't recall that. All right. And then the, the rims uh, that you noticed, would those have been factory or aftermarket or do you know? I don't know. Uh, the only thing, the only feature that stood out to you would have been the chrome mirrors? Well, I mean, as opposed to other Malibus you see on the road, the chrome mirrors, the door handles, and the mag rims are what were distinctive to me when viewing it on video. And actually, that uh, was evident on the surveillance video that you viewed, those particular features? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. So after you see... Brown, yep. sure. Right we need to take a break sure. at this time. So, uh, members of the jury, I want to remind you of your admonition. Uh, we'll take a, re uh, take a break here for 10 minutes, leave your notebooks where they are, and uh, Carrie will tell you when you can step out. should be just momentarily. Thank you, everyone. And, sir, you can step down. Defendant and attorneys of record are present. Sir, I just want to remind you you're still under oath. Mr. Brown, you may continue with your direct examination. Thank you. Um, Agent Reeson, prior to the break, <clears throat> we were discussing the uh, identifiable features on what appeared to be a black Malibu, is that right? That is correct. Okay, and what were those, again, summarize those for us if you would. Uh, the chrome side mirrors, the chrome door handles, and chrome looking mag wheels, okay. rims. And did you and other agents make efforts then to go through the surveillance video to identify uh, the different locations this car was at around the time of 745? We did. On July 18th of 2018? Correct. Okay, were there other times uh, during the uh, surveillance video where that particular car that you just described uh, appears? Yes. All right, tell us again, uh, before we look at the first video clip, when was it that the uh, jogger uh, went through on the video, what was the time? The timestamp was 745.33 or 1945.33 on the timestamp. And then when did you first see the black Malibu uh, go through uh, the, the video? It would have been approximately 20, 20 to 30 seconds later. Okay, and which direction is it traveling? It was gonna be coming up East Des Moines Street traveling west. And were you, have you reviewed uh, that particular part of the video? Yes. All right. I have on the screen right now uh, States Exhibit 14. Uh, is this a video clip? It is. All right. And would this be the first time that you would have seen the black Malibu that you described in relation to the runner that we've already viewed? It is. All right. We'll play States Exhibit 14. Uh, by the way, before we play it, uh, looking at the exhibit directionally, where does the Black Malibu appear first? The Black Malibu will 
come from the same direction as where the jogger came through, so down by the gray house, traveling toward the red, red and white truck. Okay, we'll show the video. We'll look at it one more time. <clears throat> Agent Reeson, prior to coming in uh, to trial, were we able to uh, screenshot Part of this video to get a better look at the black Malibu. Yes. And have you seen that photo? Yes. Okay. We'll show you uh, what's been uh, admitted as Exhibit 15. Do you see that? I do. On the screen uh, is Exhibit 15. First of all, before we zoom in, what is this that you notice on the black Malibu? The mirrors being chrome, the door handles, um, the chrome rims um, were immediately identifiable to me. That's a closer version of that uh, photo, is that correct? Yes. All right, you can't identify the driver? No. Or the plate? No. All right. Okay, uh, Agent Reeson, State's Exhibit 16 is now on uh, the uh, screen. Do you see that? I do. Uh, this is a video clip and, and shows us uh, what direction again? This would be to the north and east of the Collins residence. And do you see that, what appears to be that same vehicle passing through uh, this particular um, video? Yes, we do. All right, and that the date and time stamp on this uh, video is what? It would be uh, July 18th, 2018, 1947 and 51 seconds. So just shortly after the video that we viewed uh, a minute ago. Correct. Do you agree? Yes. And where I have the laser pointer, uh, is that where we see the, the uh, black Malibu come through? It is. Okay, we'll play the video. States Exhibit 16. <clears throat> this was a uh, video that drew your attention? It was. It appears to be the same car? Yes. All right, we'll watch it a second time. Did we, did you likewise, uh, did we take a screenshot of this video to get a static view of the car? Yes. And this is State's Exhibit 17 uh, that's on the screen? It is. All right. Where'd my laser pointer at? What are, what is that? That's what we believe to be a black Chevy Malibu. Okay. <clears throat> In looking at this uh, photo, I've enhanced it just a bit on the screen, uh, State's Exhibit 17. Can you catch the chrome mirror? Do you see it? Yes, I see it. And it's located here. Is that right? Yes, sir. Where I've got the laser pointer? Yes. Very good. And Going in chronological order, then, did you see the Malibu uh, uh, yet another time pass through the surveillance uh, cameras? Yes, sir. Uh, and what street was that on? Um, I believe it was 
believe that would have been back on East Des Moines. Okay. And at, uh, at what time do we have on the date and time stamp for this particular video, which is uh, State's Exhibit? Um, the timestamp on the video is 1948 hours and 44 seconds. Okay. We'll watch that video. Agent Reese, I'm going to play it a second time, uh, but just for purposes of the record, uh, generally, uh, where do we see the Black Malibu come from on the, on the video, and what direction is it traveling? It's traveling from west to east, so it appears near the red and white truck and travels down East Des Moines Street toward Boundary. Okay. And we'll watch it a second time. Were we able to likewise uh, take a screenshot of that vehicle uh, that we just saw in uh, this particular video? We were. All right, and what's on the screen is uh, State's Exhibit 19. Do you see the black Malibu? I do. This is the black Malibu? Yes, sir. Do you see those same features that you just described? I do, specifically the door handles and the chrome mirror. We'll take a closer look at that. Do you see the, uh, the wheels, the mirror, and the uh, handles that you described? I do. All right. And What was uh, the last time that you observed this particular vehicle pass through the surveillance cameras at uh, 616 East Des Moines? It would have been at 8.07, approximately 8.07 p.m., 8.06 and 55 seconds, I believe. Um, it would have been traveling from west to east on East Des Moines Street. The same direction that we have here in States Exhibit 19, is that correct? Correct. All right. Uh, on any of these uh, video surveillance cameras, can you identify the, the driver or the plate? No, sir. Is there any enhancement that you're aware of that could have uh, provided that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, State's Exhibit 20 is on the screen. Uh, it's the uh, date and time stamp is July. 18th of 2018 at 2006 and some seconds 55 seconds yes right. and uh, 2006 is in normal time is what 806 in p.m. all right we'll play exhibit 20 Do you see that same Chevy Malibu pass through on East Des Moines Street? I do. Headed to the east? Correct. Uh, this would again be headed towards the area where we had seen the jogger uh, about 20 minutes before? Yes, it would. All right, we'll look at State's Exhibit 20 uh, one additional time.
How would you describe the rate of speed of that car in comparison to the other uh, videos that we've observed? In my opinion on this trip through it seemed to be going faster to me. All right, and States Exhibit 21 is on the screen. Um, is, what is this that we're looking at, States Exhibit 21? Um, the black Chevy Malibu in a still photo. And the uh, same spoked wheels that we see in the other, on the other vehicles in the other videos are yep. here? Same mag wheels, same chrome door handles, and the chrome side mirrors. This is uh, just a blown up version of what we have on the screen, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I want to go back to an overall exhibit here. Um, exhibit four is now on the screen. Do you see that? I do. We have marked on the map, we mark it as a Tibbetts sighting. This is a, the area of the runner, is that correct? That is correct. This is Boundary Street that I have my cursor on, is that right? Yep. And East Des Moines runs east and west, is that true? That is true. Up here, what street is that? That's 385th. And the surveillance camera from the Collins residence on the siding would have been generally from his residence to the southeast. That is accurate. Okay. Right. Agent Reason, um, after reviewing each of those videos and the stills and collecting that information, um, did you relay that to other law enforcement? I did. Okay, and I know we've looked at four different clips here of the, the Chevy Malibu uh, from three different camera angles. Were there other camera angles that showed the same car? Yes. Okay, there's an, an additional camera correct, that uh, faced more to the north? Yes. Could you see the same vehicle on that camera as well? Yes, you could. Uh, and if it faced north, it would catch it in the generally the same uh, direction that we had whenever the camera was faced northeast, is that right? That is accurate. Okay. Did you see the black Chevy Malibu pass through uh, the surveillance area after 8.07? Uh, and 55 seconds. No, sir. <clears throat> now I know we've looked at uh, the Chevy Malibu. Were there other vehicles that were on the uh, the video? Yes, there were. All right. Were did you pass that same information along to law enforcement? Any any other vehicle that would have uh, drawn your attention? We passed along um, the spreadsheet that was created. All the all the. Um, vehicles that were on there. Um, there were some people, for instance, Christina Stewart was going to her parents, were able to identify who was in that car, that kind of thing. Was okay. So Christina Stewart's van appears on uh, the video traveling on East Des Moines Street? It does. At about what time do you recall? Um, 753, 1953 on the timestamp. Okay. And you knew that was her vehicle? Yes, later, once we were um, gaining information and looking into people who live on the road, travel that road, that sort of thing. All right. Now, uh, as a law enforcement officer, as generally in investigations, um, do you develop what are called leads? Certainly. What's a, what's a lead? 
Um, it's a piece of information that needs to be followed up on to see if it leads anywhere toward a resolution of an investigation. Okay. Some leads are dead ends. Sure. Some leads are more fruitful. Would that be true? That's true. Uh, but you you uh, follow those uh, leads as a law enforcement officer, as do other law enforcement officers. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, this information that you had on the video uh, mm -hmm. concerning the Black Malibu uh, would that have been a significant lead to law enforcement? Yes, in my opinion it was. All right, and particularly with regard to this car and the timing of when you see the runner, why is that? Um, the vehicle uh, passed through numerous times after seeing the runner pass through the video. Um, just within, from the time the runner went through until 8.07, there was 14 vehicles seen on those cameras. Six of those were the Malibu. Okay. All right. All right, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Defense may cross examine. <coughs> Thank you. Agent Reeson, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> the spreadsheet you made uh, also allowed agents to perhaps track down some of the registered owners of the vehicles, right? That was the goal, yes. Yeah, and that's where you got Christina Stewart, correct? Yes, sir. There was also a, a Brian Kriegel, you recall that name? I remember seeing it on there, yes. And what was the relevance of Mr. Kriegel? If I recall, he was, um, there was a new home being developed out there that he was, had a connection to. And he lived on 385th, right? Correct. There's also an individual who is suspected of being on that video at 7.31 p.m. named Jackson Eichhorn. Do you recall that? I do recall that. What's the significance of Jackson Eichhorn? Jackson Eichhorn was a high school friend um, and associate acquaintance of Molly Tibbet. She was a few years older than him. Okay. And you saw that him or a vehicle suspected to be his following the same route that the jogger was on, correct? It was preceding the jogger. Okay, but it was the same route. Sure. And uh, that pickup uh, came to the intersection where the jogger also came, mm -hmm. and then you never saw it again, right? Correct. And then it was suspected that that pickup, the dark pickup, took a right and then went into the cemetery. Is that right? We couldn't see that on video. Okay. But that was your suspicion? It was a suspicion. Okay. Um, and that cemetery uh, is basically right at the end of East Des Moines Street, right? Yes, East Des Moines will carry right into the cemetery. Did you ever go out to the cemetery? I did. And what was the purpose of you going to the cemetery? Um, we were just trying to get a better lay of the land, seeing what could be seen from the cemetery out to 385th. We found that it's kind of a, uh, you know, there's a slight upgrade you know, toward the road. It's hard, hard to see things during that time of year with corn growth and things. But you can see 385th from the cemetery? Um, you see it well because of the corn in the field. Sure. So you can see over top of it, you can see the houses to the north side of the road. Okay, very well. Now, the first time, or strike that, the jogger is seen driving or running north at 745, which would be 748, correct? Yes. Okay. And we can't identify that jogger. We suspect, though, it's Molly Tibbetts. That's what we suspected, okay. yes. And Mr. Brown showed you the videos. The first video that we saw, Exhibit 14, shows the Malibu driving westbound, right? Yes. And that's away from the direction of the jogger, correct? Correct. And the second video, again, shows the black Malibu, again, driving westbound, away from the direction of the jogger, right? Correct. And the final video, uh, where you said the Malibu is driving at a higher rate of speed, that's at 8.10 p.m. 8.07 p.m. But the true oh. time is 8.10, right? Yes, sir. And what is your knowledge of the time where we believe Molly Tibbetts was finally abducted? I don't have that. I didn't 
I don't have that information. Okay. If I told you 820, would that jog your memory? That would make sense to me. Okay. So we had the Malibu going by at 810 and Molly Tibbetts being abducted at 820. Well, it, speaking about this, I was 820 to 830 range is what I would say. Okay. And um, is it your understanding that she was uh, abducted near the intersection of 385th Avenue and 200th Street? If that's the gravel road, the 200th Street. Okay, let's assume it is. Uh, that's m what the assumption is. Did you travel out to that location? I had been out to that location. How far is that location from the city limits of Brooklyn? I'm not sure exactly where the city limits stop, um, but roughly from where the jogger was seen to that location is a little over two miles. Okay. Now, who put the yellow dot on your map? I'm not sure. And that yellow dot was there because someone had identified surveillance cameras on Mr. Logan's home? Yes. Do you know when those surveillance cameras were identified? I do not. Did you only search the surveillance video for that one hour period on the 18th? Uh, that's where we started on the 18th was working off of our timeline that we were basing the investigation from. How much footage has law enforcement reviewed off of Logan Collins' cameras? At the time I can speak to, since then I, I can't speak to that. Did Mr. Collins indicate to you how much footage was saved on his system? I believe he had a one terabyte DVR, so it would be significant. Uh, 30 days or so. Okay. So if you downloaded the information on what, August 14th? Yes. You'd have 30 days back from August 14th, right? Correct. That put it somewhere in the vicinity of, of July 16th. That sound about right? Yes. So we would have at least a couple days of footage that law enforcement could review to see if anybody was stalking or trying to, to uh, see Molly on those two days from that camera, right? What we chose to do was work off of our timeline. So we started at the knowns versus unknowns and kind of worked that direction. Okay. But the point is once you had the 18th uh, nailed down, law enforcement did no more work on reviewing that footage, right? Did no more work from working out from that time period? Correct. Yes, we were identifying the cars, vehicles, and people closest to when we saw the, the jogger. Okay. So the point is you never saw the black Malibu other than that one small time period? I did not review any other time. All right. Your investigation in, over and above the video review involved trying to speak to Wayne Cheney? I did. And you asked Wayne Cheney to give a statement? I did. And he was not cooperative, was he? He was for a while. We were able to sit down and speak for a while, but he, he did leave the interview. Okay. Now, uh, were you also involved, or strike that, what's, what was the desire to speak to Mr. Cheney arise from? Um, just case facts that had come up throughout the investigation. And what were those case facts? Um, a lot of it was just statements he had made, path of, um, once again, according to our timeline and locations, um, uh, path of travel could have been out by his property. As I understand it, uh, the investigation was focusing on the southeast corner of Powashee County, right? Correct. And that's where Mr. Cheney lived, right? Yes, sir. And Mr. Cheney uh, had a history of violence with women, right? I don't specifically recall that. Um, if there were a tip that came in involving an individual who had a history of violence with women in that area, in your training, education, and experience, would that be somebody that law enforcement would want to talk to? Absolutely. If there were an individual in that area of the county who had a history of sexual deviance or sexual violence toward women, would that be an individual law enforcement would want to talk to? Yes. Did the name Ron Pexa ever come up in your investigation? Not in my portion, no. 
were you involved at all in a canvas of the 2400 block or the 2300 block of 460th Avenue? No, sir. Were you at all involved uh, with responding to the scene where Ms. Tibbetts' body was recovered? I was not. In your training, education, and experience, once a body is recovered, like in a location where Ms. Tibbetts' body was recovered, would you want to interview persons in the area to see if they had seen or known anything out of the ordinary? Uh, certainly. Like the next door neighbor, perhaps? Yes. If someone, the next uh, house down the road within a quarter or half a mile uh, from where her body was discovered, would you not want to interview that person? That would be something you get to in the sense that obviously the location of the deceased becomes the primary. And so once again, kind of like the video, you start there and work out. Okay. And if that person who lived close to the location of the body had a history of violence against women or sexual deviance or sexual violence against women, you'd want to talk to that person again, wouldn't you? Yes. Now, that's all I have. State have any redirect? Um, no, Your Honor, no more questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're excused. You may step down. Counsel, can I get you to approach, please? Members of the jury, at this time, we'll uh, break for lunch. We'll be in recess until 1.15. Uh, please remember your admonition. Make sure you're not discussing the case with anyone, doing any type of independent research, or having any media exposure. Uh, leave your notebooks where they are, and uh, we'll be back ready to go at 1.15. Thank you.